If you've ever wanted to learn how to photograph paintings, stay right there. I'll show you how to do it. Hi guys, I'm Ken Mostek. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about all things photography. I appreciate you joining me. I hope everyone's staying safe out there. So in my last episode, which you can see right here, I was doing some photographs of some paintings for a client of mine. She does really cool paintings and then needs photos done of them so that she can send them out to get printed for greeting cards. Now for me, it's great because right now my business is really slow. And so I can use the occasional odd job like this to really kind of get me through this time and keep me creative. So this video is a continuation of my last episode where I showed you how to actually do the photography of the paintings. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit those photos and make them look exactly like the painting. We don't want to change how it looks because we want it to be authentic to the painting. I'm going to take you into Lightroom and into Photoshop and show you how I do this. Well, now let's edit these photos that I've taken. There are six of these uh, paintings. And so I'm just going to grab one. I'll grab that one with the plane on it. And I'm going to walk you through kind of how I edit these here really quickly. It doesn't take long at all. Again, I don't want to do a whole lot of editing because I don't want to change colors and all of that sort of thing. I, they need to be exactly how the painting is. So I'm here in Lightroom. And all I'm going to do is go to your uh, develop module. Okay, again, I'm just taking the whole photo so you can see the tape. You can see all of that sort of thing. Doesn't matter. We're going to take this into Photoshop and get rid of all of that. So all I'm going to do is basic adjustment. Um, I'm going to take my exposure up just a bit, a little bit of contrast, not much. I mean, like plus three. I'll bring my highlights down just a tiny bit. Again, I'm just looking at the area that's that's painted. So the plane, the person, uh, the ground that's there. Um, I'm looking at those colors and adjusting for that. I don't care about everything else that, that's around it. So I take my whites up just a bit, just a little bit of minus uh, of black, minus four, minus five, not much. Texture, I'm going to bring up just a little bit. Clarity up just a little bit, you know, plus six in those, just to make sure that it's nice and sharp. Now, I'm going to take the vibrance up just a touch. So I shoot on the Sony a7 III, and I have my picture profile set to 5. Um, and that's the one that I use when I'm taking photos. It's already, the colors are already there pretty much, so I don't have to do a whole lot of adjusting. Um, just a little bit here and there. Uh, again, vibrance up just a bit, and saturation, I don't, I mean, 2 plus two, plus three. I usually use the, the HSL uh, color, but I'm not gonna worry about that with this. Uh, everything should be right there. In the detail section, um, you grab this little icon here, and then you can come over here into your painting, and wherever you select, it's gonna come up in this box right here. I'm gonna bring my sharpening up, just because I want it to be nice and tack sharp, bring the radius up just so that everything is nice and sharp. So one thing that I do is I go into transform section and this is going to help you a lot because you've tilted that, that photo forward. So it's not exactly straight up and down. It's also, you know, not aligned correctly that way either. So if I go into uh, the transform, that's going to help me take care of that. So I'm going to hit auto and watch, and it just barely moved it. So it's pretty straight and level, but that just kind of adjusts it so that everything is nice and straight. The last thing that I do is I go down to calibration and I go down to the blue primary and the saturation down here at the very, very bottom. And I just go up maybe, you know, plus 13, somewhere in there that just makes the colors come a little bit more. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now that everything's ready to go uh, I'm going to send this over to Photoshop okay now that we're here in Photoshop this is where I'm really going to clean it up and just give them the painting that they're looking for um, again it gives you your base layer uh, make a duplicate of that I just right click on it to make a duplicate there are many ways to do it I come over and I grab my rulers because because even though it's not you can see where if I'm on this top corner up here, the bottom doesn't line up down there. Okay, so you've got to get as 
close to it as possible. Now, I'm going to check this side as well, the right side. See, and that one's pretty straight. Because what I find is that a lot of times the canvas isn't perfectly square. It isn't a perfectly square piece of paper. You know, I could try to tilt this. I could try to balance it. But then it'll throw the other side off. You just try to get it as close as possible. I'm going to do top and bottom here. And we're going to put one more. And this one I'm actually going to put at the very top. Even though that isn't part of the painting. You can see where there's a section there between the painting and the top of the page. Uh, but... I'm going to give them the entire thing and then they can take it and crop it and whatever they need to do with it uh, at a later time. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to uh, zoom in on this picture and I'm going to check my rulers um, just to make sure. See, you can see up here on the top where the ruler is not touching this and I need it to be. Um, so we're just going to bring this down just a bit like that and then just check all the sides to make sure this one i'm going to bring over just a bit i want it to be as close to the edge as possible um, but i don't want any of the shadow or anything that's in there so okay this one i'm going to bring down just a bit into that corner i want to get as much of the picture in there as possible all of this is going to be cut out and so I want to make sure that they get as much of that picture as possible. This one, I'm going to bring in just a bit. You can see how much it cuts off over here on the side. But again, that's because that canvas isn't perfectly level. I'm going to create a new layer. Bring that down underneath the background layer. Okay. Come up to edit, go down to fill. And under fill, we're going to go to white. We're going to hit OK. All right, and then that's going to give us a white backdrop so that when I cut out these sections, it will be white around the painting. Now come up to back up to the, uh, the layer that you're working on, go to your rectangular tool, and then in this top left corner, I'm just gonna start here, click and drag, and just keep your finger held down and go all the way down the page along this ruler, all right? And then all you have to do is hit delete, and then you're gonna get a white background. Okay, again, let's go in this corner. We're going to go this way this time, just down. It's fine. Go like that. Go like that. And it should snap to the ruler. Um, just like that. Okay. And then you can click and drag this however you want, just so that it's, you know, partially in the center. And you can get rid of those rulers if you want. No big deal. Um, you can also, if you want to, just to make it easier for them, you can also, you know, scale that up just to make it a little bit bigger, a little bit easier for them to work with. And then you export that out to the client. So that's it. It's really easy to do. And it's one of these odd jobs that I never really thought that I would be picking up and doing. However, I can do it. Um, you know, it's always good to know a little bit about a lot of different things. You can figure this out pretty easy. And it's good for your business. It's good for another small business that we're all helping each other out. So in this really weird time when it's hard to find clients and it's hard to find work, try to think of different things that you can do, that you can use your creativity to help out others. And it will also keep you busy and creative at the same time. So I thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. Do me a favor, go down and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Like this video because then the YouTube algorithm will send it out to more people so that uh, a lot of people can see this video. So that's it. I will see you in the next video.